I can't sleep. Today marks the one year anniversary of my wife and son's disappearance. I miss them more than I can even describe. They were the only people that I cared about in the world. My wife was beautiful. I could stare into her hazel eyes for hours. They really held her soul. A glance in them would tell me how she felt, how her day was going, if she was tired or happy or sad. They were the first part of her I fell in love with. My son shared those eyes. He was so bright, so clever. Even though I only knew him for a short year and a half before he left my life, I could tell that that boy was destined for great things. I remember the night I discovered my house left empty. I had been late coming home from work. My wife wanted me to go out of my way to get her a special ingredient for that night's dinner. She was making cheesy sloppy joes. I walked in through the front door, like every other night. It was unlocked, but that wasn't unusual for a small town in Maine. Right away I knew things weren't quite right, though nothing was terribly out of place at first glance. The entrance to our house brought you right into the living room, where my son and wife would normally be awaiting my return home. The kitchen was the next room over, separated from the living room by a full wall. To the left was a hallway that led to the bathroom and bedrooms. Zoe, I'm home. I remember how I strained my hearing, trying to pick up the slightest indication that I wasn't alone in my house. My wife's car was in the driveway, so I knew that she should have been home. Kicking off my shoes, I began to investigate. The kitchen was the most logical place for her to be, working on the dinner she had been so eager to make. It wasn't surprising to find her absent from her work, but she had clearly begun preparations for the meal. Ground pork sat in a bowl on the island with a half-chopped onion on a cutting board beside it. The oven was on, homemade buns rising on a sheet tray within. I knew that it was unlike her to leave something like this alone, but it all didn't seem to have been there that long. I checked on them to make sure they were cooking properly and continued my search. I moved down the hallway, checking the bathroom first and then our bedroom. Both were empty. The door to my son's room was closed and, though unusual, I assumed my wife had put him down for a late nap. Accounting for him helped ease my tension a bit. Perhaps my wife had gone for a short walk, or maybe stepped out to the garage for a cigarette. I had a tendency to worry irrationally, so instead of continuing my search, I decided that I would try to do the sweet thing and finish the work that my wife had started. I fully minced the onion, added it to the pork, and threw the meat into a pan with a few spices that I can't recall. I added the cheese sauce my wife had me get and pulled the buns out of the oven. When all the work was said and done, it was six o'clock. Time had clearly escaped me, and I had nearly forgotten that my son was still napping. I suppose the fact that he hadn't cried out for me yet should have struck me as odd, but I was trying to suppress my usual paranoia. All of that failed me when I opened the door to his room. Where I expected to see my son napping away, instead I was greeted by an empty crib. All the lights in the room were on. His ceiling fan, his night light, and the dim light we keep on his changing table in case we need a light to change him at night. His window was open and there were small tears in the screen, like a cat had been clawing at them. The cool air of late September New England blew in, sending shivers down my spine. Realizing again that I still hadn't seen my wife, I doubled down my effort to find her. I checked the garage to see if she was out playing with our son. Strange as that struck me. The basement was next, though I doubted I'd find her there. She held that place in great disdain. I called her phone, repeatedly. No answer. I began to search the house for anything else that might provide me with a hint as to their whereabouts. I discovered that my wife had left her cigarettes on the table by the front door. Her purse was hanging from our bed's footboard. My son's diaper bag was in his room, unpacked. My wife hadn't left her cell phone, at least not in any of the usual places that I knew of. The extra set of house keys were still in their home 
and both my wife and son's shoes and jackets were put away, but I did manage to find one item missing. My son's stroller. Had my wife taken my son for a walk? It seemed unlikely. I had been home for over an hour at this point, and if she were going to be gone so long, she would have left me a note. Moreover, it was far too cold out to take a one-and-a-half-year-old outside without a coat. Things weren't adding up. I began to call friends and family, asking if they had maybe picked up Zoe and the baby. As my list of people that might have been with my missing family dwindled, so too did my hope. I gave up after the fifth or sixth call, finding that it didn't make much more sense to ask, considering my son's car seat was still in my wife's car. A worst case scenario entered my mind. What if there was an emergency? and she had taken him away in an ambulance. I called the local dispatch, dread and hope competing in my heart. I could barely speak, stumbling over my words as I feared the worst. Nothing. They had no record of anyone being dispatched to my home recently. Numb, I took a moment before telling the dispatcher that I had two missing persons to report. Every night since that night, I leave my porch light on, hoping that they come home to me. There have been a few times when I've had hope. I'll come home to my back door being ajar, which I've been able to determine now is due to an issue with it latching. Like I said, I rarely have to lock it. Or maybe I'll come back to an anonymous voicemail or note left in my mailbox. It's been a long year dealing with these false hopes, closing accounts, removing my wife's cell phone from our plan. I can only assume that she had a mental breakdown and took our son off into the woods. At least, that's what I used to believe. As I lie here in bed, hurt and confused, I can't help but read the text I just got from my wife's old phone number, over and over. When are you coming home? We miss you.